So in this video, we're gonna talk about three things. We're gonna talk about automatic tire deflators, we're gonna talk about valve cores and valve stems and how they all work together. A valve stem is kind of something that just works, right? It's something on your vehicle and you don't really put that much thought into it. But let's break this apart and talk a little bit about all the components and how they work together. Now, here are a bunch of different rubber and metal valve stems, but they all come in different shapes, sizes, and configurations. These are typical standard automotive valve stem items, but what's not shown here is the even greater selection used on dually setups. Now this one right here is used for the Coyote dual beadlock air channel. It's deep, smaller than normal nut, makes the Coyote patented air channel work virtually in all rims, regardless of the original valve stem hole size and location. This square-based valve stem is designed to handle up to 100 PSI, whereas of standard uh, rubber valve stems are designed for only 65 PSI max, according to the Rim and Tire Association. This rubber valve stem, this really big one, is larger than normal because it needs to fit bigger rim valve stem holes. You can see that there's many different caps, but these two right here, they're special because they are designed to remove valve cores. But what exactly is a valve core? Let's discuss for a moment and take a detailed look at a valve core, the part inside the valve stem. It allows you to put air in and out of that valve stem. And most importantly, it prevents air from leaking out of your tire or inner tube when not in use. Now, due to industry standards, there are common parts to all valve cores. A is the depression pin that opens and closes seal B at the end of the valve core pin. D and C prevents air from leaking between the valve stem and the core. D identifies the threads that secure the core to the inside of the valve stem. Internal spring E, along with tire pressure, makes seal B work. So now let's take a look at a empty valve stem. Now, due to standards, pretty much the inside of all rubber and metal valve stems are gonna be identical. But so here it is empty. And you can see right about here is a taper boundary that the valve core seating area can fit into. So now let's look at the actual valve core inside of the valve stem. You can see how easily that all works together with the depression pin here and the seals and the end securely keeping the air within the unshown tube. When using deflators, it's very important to always use a valve cap. Without this protection, there's a good chance that the dirt will be in the valve core and enter the deflator as you first start airing down. If not immediately over time, this will lead to deflator malfunction. Use valve caps, especially if you use automatic tire deflators. Okay, so now for the third part, we're gonna go over the actual tire deflator we will use the world standard to which all others are compared. This section is the adjustment cap used to set your destination pressure. Here is the lock collar securing your destination pressure setting. You can see hidden right here is the spring that you're actually adjusting. And then you have the O-ring seal on the piston. Beneath the piston is four evenly distributed holes. You can see the holes here. And then we have the valve core depression pin. It's centered beneath those air passages. This is what a deflator looks like after it automatically turns on. Note the side hole where the tire air leaves the deflator. The deflator valve core depression pin has opened the valve core as shown. Again, this section is the valve core seal to the valve stem. Tire pressure has lifted this section, the O-ring seal and piston allowing the tire to air down via the side hole in the center of the screen, which the four holes in the deflator base are letting air into the deflator. Now this is a picture of the deflator set in off. Despite here still depressing the valve core pin, spring pressure has overcome the air pressure in the tire and it has shut off the deflator. At this point, you can remove the deflator and move on. In review, you have three components. You have the automatic tire deflator, you have the valve core, and you have the valve stem. The valve stem core is seated inside of the valve stem. The deflator is able to connect to the end of that valve stem and interacting with the valve stem core. You're able to adjust the spring tension on the deflator, which when a certain amount of tire pressure has been released, the piston is slammed shut. This allows really no guesswork. You just screw on the deflator and the internal workings 
will handle everything to set it for the right pressure. I hope this has cleared up some things for you, and we hope to see you out on the road. Thanks a lot.